it's a great job, it's fair. Well. And we are going to say that we will pack Bibles, but not only Bibles. We're also going to take food parcels for every household there. And the food parcels will help them for a week of our food supplies. So we went there and we prayed and we asked God to plan the road for us. We are only there because He wants us there. And we stopped at the side of the road and we saw kids there playing. And when we stopped on the, road, on the side of the road and I decided, I want to give Bibles out and I want to give food parcels. And all the kids were running to me and saying, Oh, this is 20 round wood here. You can buy this, you can buy this. But when I told them, I don't want to buy, I really want to give you just a Bible, their eyes just went wide open of, Wow, I'm going to get my own Bible. I'm going to get actually my own Bible, that word of Jesus. And we gave all the Bibles to the kids, and we went to villages where we gave Bibles out. And we met this young lady at the Lost Shack where we stayed, and she told us about the village where she stays. And we met the councilman there, we talked, and we planned the next day I'll have to come and give Bibles up and food parcels. So we went there the next day, but we stopped next to a school. And I saw how the kids were playing, and I just felt like I need to go. But first, I really need to help these people here who are sitting on the grass asking for food parcels and Bibles. But afterwards, everything happened. I asked the councilman, can I please go to the school? And we went to the school, and it was the first time I was hard like this. The principal came out and hugged me, but I couldn't even breathe afterwards. <laughs> but the principal told me, I pray every day for years that somebody will come to my school and bless my students with their own Bible and the Word of God. And when I heard that, it really touched my heart, and I know this is what I live for. I live for God's Word, for God's passion, and how is with my spread. So we went to the classrooms and he introduced us to all the teachers and all the kids. And there wasn't one classroom of kids that didn't see that balance and didn't say thank you. But when we came to the grade one to three, the principal said, okay, they can understand English. They only speak Zulu. I can't speak Zulu to save my life. <laughs> so the only thing in my mind that came on was Kajani. So I sat there in just a good journey the whole time, and all the kids just laughed. But when the principal said, said to all the kids, she's going to come back and bless you with Bibles, one boy stood up and he ran to me and said, Mommy, Daddy, won't believe that I will be my Bible because we can't afford one. And so when we came back, I told my parents, I need to come back. So that's where the Bible Cookie House project started. It's this cookie house set that I make and what you can buy and you can build. But every house cookie set what you buy, you raise three kids with their own Bible. And I have enough funds to buy, I think it's hundred and something Bibles out of the 150 that I need to get. And my goal is to go early January back and to base each and every child in the Bible. And the Bible pro project isn't just about me. It's not my project, it's nobody's. This is God's project. And I'm just the instrument that God uses. It's God's blessings that keeps multiplying the Bibles again and again. And I remember at lockdown, Pastor Dr. Anthony gave a certain seven um, speech and he told us about how God will do it again and again. And that song, I was struggling, I thought, Bible's not coming greatly, it's stopped. And I started losing hope here and there. But when I heard the seven seven, I was like, God will do it again and again. And I prayed and I said, God, only you can do it. This is your project, not mine. And I believe that you will do it again and again. It wasn't 10 minutes after. Um, we went to the internet to a site and we buy Bibles. And Auntie Maddox contacted me and said, um, what are you going to do with the extra money of the Bibles and the funds that you made? I said, there's no extra money. I counted everything. She said, 
You're going to need double the more Bible than someone you would have. I just really want to say, when times get tough, put all your worries in God's hand. That God loves us and will always and will bless us again and again. And I really just want to say thank you to everyone who supports the Bible Project. And mainly, thank you God for blessing me to be such a Thank <laughs> you.